Tesla is continuing to make new breakthroughs in battery technology that may be announced on Tesla Battery Day. And as Tesla continues on this path, labs across the world are making their breakthroughs in battery technologies. In this video, we will look at one lab specifically and look into Tesla's recent battery patent. Remember the 1 million mile battery? Well, here's something better to chew on that has the potential to change the world as we know it. But first, let's get plugged in. Hello and welcome to EV Source. My name is Harry and I'm your host for today's dose of EVs and technology. Okay, here we are guys, the moment when battery and energy storage research really starts to get in high gear. Now things are getting really interesting with new battery breakthroughs happening around the planet. And once these new battery technologies make it to the public, nothing will be the same again. I'm talking cars that charge in minutes with a range well over 1000 miles, mobile phones that charge within minutes and last over a week, and even electric aircraft. Keep watching and you'll see how. While there's still room to improve lithium-ion battery cells, most people in the industry believe that solid-state batteries are going to be the next generation of preferred chemistry. Now, Tesla's battery research partners have unveiled a path to more energy-dense lithium-ion cells that could shift research away from solid state. Tesla is looking into a new battery and has applied for a patent on a new electrolyte solution for new lithium metal and anode-free battery cell. While Tesla's current batteries offer great advantages when it comes to energy density and costs, they still need improvements. With the new lithium metal and anode-free battery, Tesla's battery research partner Jeff Dunn and his team were able to create a battery that is much more energy dense than the current batteries. Anode free cells are also less expensive and easier to assemble due to their lack of anode coating. Tesla describes the current problems with lithium metal batteries in the patent application. Challenges with lithium metal and anode free lithium batteries have prevented their widespread adoption. Improving certain characteristics of lithium metal and anode free battery systems will allow for more widespread use of such systems. In other words, the big the biggest hurdle right now is longevity, but Don's team claims that their new electrolyte would help improve just that. Here's a quote from the patent application. Provided our electrolyte solutions including both lithium difluoroborate and lithium tetrafluoroborate and a solvent component for use in lithium metal or anode free rechargeable battery cell and methods of using the electrolyte solutions to improve capacity retention of the battery cells. In the patent application, they do release test results showing improvements in battery capacity retention, but they don't seem to have pushed the cells beyond 100 cycles for now. The test results show they were able to do around 75 cycles until the cells started to have about 90% capacity left. They would need to put the batteries to many more cycles in order to make them viable for commercialization. However, they did not disclose any information about the battery's energy density, but it is expected to be higher than the current solid state batteries that have been under research and development by many others that have an energy density of about 900 watt hours per liter. If Tesla can make a battery with an energy density exceeding 900 watt hours per liter, this would be a big leap forward. Not only would cars have a range of 500 plus miles, but this technology would also make small electric aircraft a reality. Just like the ones we've seen Uber, Boeing, Hyundai and many others showcasing in the past of what the future of aviation may look like. Flying big airplanes with electric powertrain is probably not going to happen soon, but a smaller craft that goes short distances just like the taxis do today could actually become a reality very soon. I'll be getting more into this topic in an upcoming video, so make sure you're subscribed and have that bell icon turned on so you get notified when I drop new videos. This way, you won't miss anything. And if you're a proud Tesla owner looking to accessorize your vehicle to make it stand out, check out Abstract Ocean and use the code EVSource for a 10% off on your purchase. In the meantime, electric car batteries are rapidly improving 
It is estimated that lithium-ion batteries improve approximately 5% every year. This trend has been continuing to date, and at this rate, we will reach from the current energy density of 250 watt hours per kilogram to 400 watt hours per kilogram in nine years. But that's without any battery breakthroughs. These breakthroughs have the potential to leapfrog the current projections and fast track us to a sustainable future. The increased competition in this field is already showing great results, but to get these breakthroughs into mass production can take a couple of years. In short, battery capacities are going up and battery costs are going down, and Tesla continues to be an important driver of both these trends. By 2030, the IEA expects the average electric vehicle to have a battery size of 70 to 80 kilowatt hour and an average range of 217 to 248 miles. That figure may sound overly conservative to a Tesla owner with 250 miles being the lowest range you can get in a Tesla today. However, the maximum range isn't everything, and the IEA may be projecting large numbers of low-priced electric vehicles aimed at buyers for whom a 200-mile range is quite sufficient. Think about all those people that mostly use their car to drive to work and back and run a few errands here and there, and rarely exceeding 50 miles driven on any given day. The video I made recently about affordable electric cars that you can buy today most have a range of around 150 miles, which is enough for a lot of people driving around the city. But getting the range to 200 plus miles would make them more appealing to a lot of people and thus accelerating the transition to electric vehicles on a massive scale. There are many battery breakthroughs happening around the world today, and to keep this video short, I'm going to focus on just one today. These batteries come from Daegu Gyeongbok Institute of Science and Technology in Korea. They're called lithium sulfur batteries or LiS or LSB in short. They hold as much promise as solid state batteries, if not more, due to their potential for a 2600 watt hour per kilogram energy density. That is 10 times what the best current lithium ion cells can offer. The issue is that scientists never managed to make lithium sulfur batteries endure more than a few cycles until now. Researchers from the institute achieved 2000 cycles with their lithium sulfur batteries with the help of silica. Silica is a cheap metal oxide that is not conducting, which will make people wonder how it can be useful for the LSBs. It is because it is highly polar, attracting other polar molecules, including one of the most harmful for lithium sulfur cells, lithium polysulfides, or LIPS in short. When they dissolve, that implies in a sulfur loss. When they get to the anode, they can also harm the cell. The silica is used to create a platelet-ordered mesoporous structure called POMS for short. It works as the cathode after it receives a conductive carbon-based agent. Being polar, it allows LIPS to form but neither to dissolve nor to damage the anode. This is what enables the lithium sulfur battery to endure 2000 cycles. If we get a 2600 watt hour per kilogram battery that can do over 2000 cycles, we could have cheap and lightweight battery packs that can offer 3000 plus miles of range on a single charge. Just let that sink in for a moment and what something of that sort could represent for electric cars and possible future aircraft. But until these technologies don't make it out into the real world, or at least into a prototype vehicle, these technologies will remain a hope for the future. As we continue on this trend of electrifying every vehicle, the worldwide demand for batteries will increase exponentially. To meet this demand, Tesla has already started planning for terafactories instead of gigafactories. The new factory that's likely going to be constructed in Texas where the Cybertruck will most likely be built is going to be Tesla's biggest factory to date. Musk has been calling it the Terra Factory and this is because it may one day output as much as 1 terawatt hour per year. The Giga Factory in Nevada outputs approximately 35 gigawatt hour per year. 1 terawatt hour is 1000 gigawatts, which means a Terra Factory would have more battery output than 28 Giga Factories combined. Now this does not mean it's going to be 28 times bigger than the Nevada Giga Factory. The new dry batteries from Maxwell will take far less space to make, which translates to more battery output within the same space as the Nevada Gigafactory. By making terafactories instead of gigafactories, Tesla would be able to respond to the growing demand for batteries. The IEA expects global electric vehicle battery production capacity to skyrocket 
from around 170 gigawatt hour per year today to 1.5 terawatt hour per year in 2030 in the stated policy scenario based on existing government policies or 3 terawatt hour in the sustainable development scenario based on the climate goals of the Paris Agreement. Modes of transport other than cars are expected to account for only 11% of battery demand in 2030. So electric passenger cars are central to the development of the battery market. Battery costs are expected to continue their steady downward trend. According to the IEA, battery prices averaged more than $1,100 per kilowatt hour in 2010. By 2019, they had fallen to $156 per kilowatt hour. Industry pundits predict that a price of $100 per kilowatt hour will be the tipping point at which electric vehicles can be sold for the same price as legacy vehicles, and it will bring about the final days of the oil age. No automaker publishes the price of its packs, but it's widely believed that Tesla's costs are below the industry average and some expect the company to announce that it has cracked or at least gotten close to the magic $100 mark at the battery day on September 22nd. I think it's clear that Tesla is researching different types of battery technologies and with this lithium metal and anode free battery, they're now challenging solid state batteries. Others like Samsung have already made their own variants of solid state batteries but they're still years away from getting them into the market. This move by Tesla not only challenges other solid-state batteries, but takes it a step further with anode-free batteries that could potentially be much more energy-dense and cheaper than any other batteries out in the market. And knowing Tesla's speed of innovation and development, these new batteries could potentially be out in the market sooner than their competitors, given that they are able to overcome the challenges. What do you think about these new breakthroughs and how do you think they will impact the technologies we use today? Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. And if you're wondering where to get shirts like these, check out EV Source online store for shirts, hoodies, and more. I hope you enjoyed today's episode here on EV Source. And if you did, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. This is by far the best way you can support this channel. But if you would like to show more support to help the channel grow and get better, consider becoming a patron and get your name on the show and receive exclusive access to EV Source content and more. Thanks for watching and remember to keep charging ahead and I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe and take care.